Let's get close. And today's the day we do the tango. Would you like to learn to tango, Donna? Right now? We're going to be covering stop and go movements, the character and feel of the dance, and some other little gems that'll take your dancing from this. To this. Well, maybe not to that, but you'll definitely not be this bad. Fatality. Poor Neil. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to The Dancer's Hideout, the place where you'll find all the tips and tricks to help you in your dancing. My name's Ian, I'm a professional teacher and former competitor with over 30 years of dancing experience and teaching. Tango is just one of those dances that just <laughs> with popularity. Everyone, everywhere has heard of a tango. Just like everybody's heard of that new restaurant that's on the moon, no? You haven't heard. To be fair, it hasn't had any good reviews yet. I've heard it lacks atmosphere. Fatality. And atmosphere is a massive feature in tango. It's a dance which is extremely popular with social dancers, with beginners, right the way through to a competitive level as well. And probably this is because of its character and its stylization. Tango is the only dance within the ballroom repertoire that alters the frame and the hold of the couple position. In all the other dances like waltz and foxtrot and quickstep and Viennese waltz, the hold and the frame remain the same. <laughs> that rhymes! See? I'm a poet and I don't even know it. We actually recently covered the ballroom hold and frame in a featured video, so click the link on the screen to go check that one out as well. Tango requires a much more compact hold and feel, and this is partly due to its Argentine origins. But there is another reason as well. Come close again. Here's a secret fact that not many people know about. I said come close. Closer. Come closer. It's a secret, guys. Okay, that's too close. Back up a little bit. Tango used to be a Latin dance. I know, I know, it's true. That's one of many other reasons why tango is so different to its other ballroom counterparts. Anyway, tango is very strongly known for its staccato actions, which correlate with the music, which makes it a lot more faster and has a lot more dramatic actions within it, which contrasts the other swing dances in the ballroom. And this ultimately is because tango uses a contrast between stop and go movement. Nice. Just like that impatient driver at the traffic lights that's waiting for the light to turn green. Is he going? Is he stopping? We just don't know. I don't think even he knows. The aspect of stop and go movements within tango make its technique and the application of its steps a lot more flat. You'd be surprised at how often I've seen dancers of pretty much every level miss this point. Social dancers and beginners, they get taught so many different things, particularly in the early stages of their dancing, that they don't get a chance to actually experience the movement in this particular way. Sad times. Competitors are so eager to move and progress around the floor and create such dynamic and contrasting actions that quite often they fail to show an actual tango. Which reminds me of being on the London Underground on one of those busy trains during one of the rush hour times. London Underground, London Underground. they're all late. Like, we all want to get off and have some space, alright? But you get those people, usually a man. <laughs> who sit with their legs so wide apart that you think that they're taking payment for services rendered, if you know what I mean. So, let's first look at the way that we use our legs and feet in tango. Because tango is a flat dance, that means there shouldn't be any rising or lowering taking place within the feet when you're taking your steps. We won't have it here at the dancer's hideout. I mean, there are exceptions to this, but they're more commonly seen within advanced movements, so for the purposes of today, we'll leave them out, okay? We can, however, create a rising and lowering action through our legs. <laughs> oh my! Going from the car park level to the reception level, and from the reception level back down to the car park level, in the hotel analogy that we've talked about before. Check this video on waltz that we made, where we talk about the rising and lowering actions. <laughs> Because steps and footwork will tend to be flat in tango, that will mean that the steps that we produce will feel like normal size steps, i.e. don't try and move the steps that you do, as this will create a problem within the dance. What are you going to do with that stick? Anthony Hurley outlines quite nicely in a chapter dedicated to tango in Wally Olney's book 
dance addiction. He says, the tango requires normal sized walks. Feet too far apart loses the triangle picture. As an example, think of the man's foot placing in promenade position. Weight on the right foot, side and slightly back. The distance between the supporting foot and the free foot should be approximately the length of one's own foot. So just as I would frantically do after coming home from the supermarket and my parents happened to buying me a pack of brand new micro machine cars, ah, <sighs> those were the days. Let's unpack a couple of things here. Q infographic. Oh, I see, that's the top of Never mind. Cue the infographic. The triangle picture that Anthony Hurley is referring to is the imagined shape made by the vertical line of the body from the head down to the knees, as you can see from the infographic on the screen here, and the contrasting horizontal line from the left elbow to the right elbow. In the same section of the book, Anthony Hurley also explains this triangle principle. To further explain my principles for tango body and leg line, I refer to the triangle theory. When the man or lady stand together correctly in tango position, a triangle should be visible. To explain in words, from the man's left elbow to right elbow, there should be a straight line. From the elbows to the back of the knees, there are two imaginary lines meeting at the point behind the knees. The lady, naturally, is the normal opposite. This triangle shape is what needs to be maintained whilst we're dancing our tango. If you happen to be moving your steps more than they actually should be because you're trying to move across the floor or you're just trying to do something that's outside the scope of what the technical requirements for tango allow, then you're gonna break the triangle shape that we should see. <laughs> you serious? Never break the triangle shape. <sighs> Not good. The last thing you want to do is look like this. You can go your own way. Go your own way. Like, even his partner doesn't like it. Look. Poor Neil. Every figure in tango has either a stop action involved in it or a go in action. Okay. Let's look at some examples of figures that are used in every level of choreography. The two walks, which are commonly used in tango, classic, classic figure, uses a clear go movement on both walks with the right foot and the left foot, as they're clearly progressive steps. The progressive link has a go movement on the first step, as the first step is used to move into the figure, and the second step uses a stop action to help switch into promenade position. Lastly, let's look at the natural rock turn that uses a 4 to 6 of a reverse turn ending. The first step uses a stop movement to commence the figure, a go movement over the steps 2 and 3 for the rock action, a stop movement on step 4 to set up for the go movement on step 5 moving into the reverse turn ending, a stop action once again on step 6 to the side, and ending with step 7 as a closing action. By characterising each of the figures using this particular principle, you will both dramatically alter both the look and the feel of all of the movements involved. Let me show you an example from my own dancing. This close-up shows me dancing with a former partner in the white dress here. As I'm dancing the commencing sequence of my choreography, you can clearly see the alterations between the stop and go actions being used here. Now aside from seeming boastful, what I'm trying to highlight here is the use and effectiveness of stop and go actions. If they're good enough for me, they're good enough for everybody else. Now look at the panned out version of the same clip here, and watch how all the other couples are constantly moving and turning. They could easily look like they're dancing either a fast waltz or a fast foxtrot, rather than a tango. The simplistic view that I personally take on this, aside from showing you the correct tango movement, is that tango should be flat and move in very clear, straight lines, which is exemplified by stop and go movements found within the figures. If I kept turning all the time, or using the rising and lowering actions, a little bit like what you saw from the video, then the judges wouldn't be able to see my number when I'm dancing to competition. If I move in a straight line and I create like a stop action, if a judge sees the number on my back, they might go, hmm. Yeah, let's put them through, maybe. That is until like, maybe I turn around and they see my face. There's a strange sense of clarity that you get, and in like an inner strength, when you're using this type of action in combination with the flat steps that you need to dance in tango. And this is because of the relationship that exists between the firmness of positioning used and the establishment of the body weight within a stabilized 
The infographic you can see here shows the base area of the feet and body weight when the feet are fully closed. And this one illustrates the area covered when the feet are opened to a more parallel position mentioned earlier by Anthony Hurley. As you can see, there's a lot more surface area available to the dancer in that second image. And just like those people, when they go to McDonald's, they order like a large Big Mac meal and mozzarella sticks and chicken strips and then like a chicken wrap meal and then a Diet Coke. Seriously? Diet Coke? That's like taking a spanner to the sinking ship of the Titanic. Who are you kidding here? Although those mozzarella dippers are pretty good. Tasty. And now I want some. This technical aspect correlates to the leg styling that we typically see within tango. It's not just aesthetic. There's an actual technical and physical benefit to this. As a teaching method, I would regularly encourage students to step underneath their shoulder or keep their feet underneath themselves when they're taking steps. And the infographic that you just saw is the reason why. It's because when they take a step in this particular way, particularly where Tango is concerned, it means that they're all the time on bounce. Which means they're in a position to choose whether they can go or whether they can stop, depending on what the figure requires. And because of that, ultimately, it allows them to produce a better Tango. Let me show you what I mean. Here, you can see that I'm stood with my weight in a 50-50 position. The knees are flexed, so I'm in the car park level of our hotel. If I shift my weight to my right foot and then recess my left foot onto the inside edge of the toe to create a progressive link position, altering the feet to resemble that promenade position, you'll see that the surface area within the base has remained the same. I'll show this as a lady as well, just so that you can see both examples. This aspect creates static energy, which can then be released into potential energy, resulting in the drive action for the following figure. The drive action is definitely a topic for another day, guys. Now here's the same action, but where the foot pulls in slightly in promenade, reducing the base area. This aspect is a common occurrence in a lot of people's dancing when they're doing tango and it doesn't stop at a beginner level, it can go right the way through. By keeping the legs in use with a flexion or extension movement, keeping them nice and relaxed, and footwork which is either using a flat foot, a heel into a flat foot, or a toe or ball of foot into a flat foot, will allow for the correct technical elements in tango to be met. There's been many a time when I've heard of a teacher giving some form of lecture and they would explain tango having many, many like complicated elements. And this is why. However, what we're doing today is making this a lot more clearer, hopefully. I'm learning. The combination of stop and go movements combined with a compressed and wide base with the legs and feet correlated to the different types of flat formed footwork that we can use help provide the necessary feeling attributes that are associated to tango. It needs to feel like a tango. Using these elements gives the dancer this, this feeling that we all love when we're dancing tango. To help round this off today, let's look at an excerpt taken from Alex Moore's book, Ballroom Dancing. Tango music is so attractive that the moderate dancer will be well repaid for the time spent in learning a few of the simple basic figures. The keen dancer dancer who takes the trouble to acquire that elusive tango atmosphere will find full compensation from the correct interpretation of what is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating dance rhythms. I hope today's video has helped highlight some of the key aspects involved in tango dancing, which you can use to both dazzle and amaze people with. If you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give us a like, we'll really appreciate it of course. If you'd like to see more from the dancer's hideout, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ding the bell icon so that you can stay notified from whenever we're putting out some new content and videos. You can also drop down in the comments section. <laughs> anything that you found interesting or useful from today's video or maybe there's something you want to see in a future video let's hear about it you can also get more actively involved with what we do here at the dancers hideout by contributing to our gofundme page the details of which i'll put in the description section any contributions which are made will be greatly appreciated and we can list you as a contributor on our credit section in the meantime i've been ian this is the dancers hideout and it's been a pleasure <laughs>